Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving up your Monday morning to be with us today and for bearing with our uh, minor technical difficulties this morning. Uh, apologies for this. Um, His Excellency, Dr. Eng Rektana, Director of the Large Tax Debt Payer Department within the General Department of De uh, Tax Debt. Mr. Hoiben Chai, Official Chief of Business, the Business Registration Department, Representatives from Sectorial Committee, Clinton. Uh, company representatives and ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor today's event. Type on e commerce in Cambodia, legal compliance and tax. This is, of course, a, top a topic of high importance to e commerce and all, indeed, all sectors of Cambodia. Every, I think all of us during the pandemic have seen just how important e commerce is becoming, the trend towards it becoming more important in the future. And in today's workshop, we really hope to break down some of those topics with honored representatives from the General Department of Taxation and the Ministry of Commerce to answer some of the questions you may have on the latest regulation. So um, as a little bit of a flashback on the previous regulation uh, developed by the Royal, Develop by the Royal Government of Cambodia, um, the law on e-commerce was enacted on the 2nd of November, 2019. The sub-decree on e-commerce was issued on the 27th of August, 2020. The subdecree on the implementation of VAT on e-commerce was issued on the 8th of April, 2021. And following these laws and subdecrees, uh, many practice instructions and notifications were issued, issued by the Ministry of Commerce and the General Department of Taxation under the Ministry of Economy and Finance. So Eurocham previously has discussed these kind of these topics. On the 25th of June, 2021, we launched a webinar on the new regulations on e-commerce uh, in association with the Ministry of Commerce and the ADB. And we also were involved in a number of on consumer, prote consumer protection and the, role that, and the role that consumer protection would play in Cambodia's e-commerce landscape. So building on those, sorry, building on these developments, these past events, these, these developments by the Royal Government and the success of the above webinar, uh, Eurocham today, together with our digital, and technology, our digital and technology and tax committees, have organized today's workshop to give the private sector an opportunity to hear the reg practical regulatory updates through the presentations by our high-level ministry representative, representatives. So Mr. Hoi Ben Chai will be talking on the e-commerce registration, and Dr. His Excellency Dr. Eng Ratana will be talking on the e-commerce. After these two presentations, We'll be having a panel discussion cordially joined by those two uh, previous participants, as well as our head of our tax committee, Mr. Clint O'Connell, and Mr. Matthew Timpitz, the chairman of Eurocham's Digital and Technology Committee, and the founder and CEO of Click Asia. So on this note, I just want to show our gratefulness and, uh, gratefulness and sincere thanks for the Ministry of Commerce and the Ministry of Economy and Finance for their continued support of Eurocham and our initiatives. I want to say a huge thank you to our committee heads for making these events possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you for coming for bit, and again, for bearing with us with our small technical difficulties this morning. And I really hope you enjoy this workshop. So with that, I'll open up and we'll have the next, we'll have the first presentation. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Thomas Hathkes, for your kind, thoughtful remarks. Uh, unfortunately, Hey, we have um, His Excellency Soksa Pia. He can uh, due to his personal reasons, as well as uh, His Excellency Om Dararat from the Ministry of Commerce could not be here with us as well. But I'm delighted to present to you Mr. Hoi Bunchai, Official Chief of the Business Registration Department to give his presentation and his remarks. Please give him a warm welcome. Um, good morning, everyone, and uh, good morning, Mr. Thomas Saskat, uh, Deputy Executive Director of Eurocham, uh, His Excellency A. Ratna, Director of uh, Tax Department, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Bun Chai, and I'm represent 
of Mr. Almdara Red, His Excellency, and uh, His Excellency is so prepared that he cannot uh, join us today due to his personal reason. So uh, in this uh, section, I'm going to talk about the compliance on e-commerce, uh, especially for the license and permit. And this is not our first workshop. Actually, we have conducted many workshops uh, with our partner Eurocham, ADP, and uh, with the uh, uh, Minister uh, Budget. And we have conducted several workshops already, and we have uh, announced uh, three times already on the granting of e-commerce license and permits. So this, this workshop is very detailed share and uh, to alert one can uh, to take more and especially on regarding to the sorry for this one so um, I will show every one of you here a very quick presentation on the requirement and classification criteria in order to uh, applying for e-commerce permit or license for the service provider or intermediary, especially for company. As we know that due to the COVID season here, we see that uh, e-commerce transaction is uh, improving a lot, growing a lot. And everyone here, almost everyone, including myself, that now we are going to use, we are using the, the, the e-commerce, especially ordering food, ordering service, do uh, by phone or by online or by computer or by website. So uh, let's go through our slide. So this is our key topic that we are going to talk this morning. So the first one. So uh, we have a key topic today to going to talk. So first one is we're talking about the complying with uh, e-commerce regulation. Uh, we have our e-commerce law, we have sub-degree, we have our broadcast. The second point, we're going to talk detail about the license. The third point, we talk about the permit for individual or sole proprietorship. Uh, fourth, we talk about non-resident e-commerce service provider. Five, public service exemption, uh, registration procedure, and recent policy. So uh, I'm going to brief you a little bit about the e-commerce. Actually, we have our law that uh, promulgated by our king dated 2nd November 2019. After that, we have the sub-degree on e-commerce dated on 27 August 2020. And we have two broadcasts. It is broadcast on e-commerce dated on 9 October 2020. And our joint broadcast regarding to the public service fee. So regarding to our e-commerce, we have a, a lot of articles. But the article that related to our uh, e-commerce licensing granting the permit or license is Article 26. So it in, in this Article 26, it states that an intermediary and electronic commerce service provider shall request a permission or license from Ministry of Post Telecommunication and Ministry of Commerce. So with the Ministry of Commerce, we have granted two. First one is permission, light, permission letter for the physical person and the license for the legal person. So this is the law that stated in the our uh, uh, e-commerce law, Article 26, is the basic that allowing the, the Ministry of Commerce to granting the permission letter and the license. Following by the, the law, we have uh, also Article 29, is stated that the minimum information for electric commerce that have four key elements. The first one is we need the, the, the service provider to provide their name, their email, their communication, method and the, especially the term and condition that they gonna state in their application form when they, they are applying the permit or license uh, with the Ministry of Commerce. And Article 56, they state about the unauthorized transaction. So what if the company or individual that operating their e-commerce online and they didn't apply for the license or permit with Ministry of Commerce? So what is the result if they didn't do so? So we have stated here, if we found out that uh, the service provider or the company or individual that doing business online without asking the permission from Minister of Commerce, we have the penalty. And if it is serious, we also have the other, other uh, penalty for, for, for them. Following by the law, we have our sub-degree. That in this sub-degree, there is uh, Article 2, it is a scope, Article 4, 
it is to, to give the Ministry of Commerce the authority to issuing the permit or license to intermediary or service provider. And in this sub-degree also, we, we state about the procedure, the document requirement, the renewal, the amendment, and this is what we are going to talk today, especially the, the exception one, also we including in this slide, an obligation and condition for applying the license or permit. Uh, following by that, we also issue the broadcast. So in this broadcast, we will state again about the, the procedure application in here and requiring document in here. And the broadcast on the public fee, we will state how much we're going to spend for individual permit, how much we're going to spend for the sole and for the license. So right now, we're going to talk about uh, two big points. The first one is the, the license for the entity and the permit for individual or sole proprietorship. So we go to, to the first point. So this is our e-commerce license that nowadays we already that put in place that for the, the company that run platform or doing business on e-commerce, they need to, to ask for the license here. And right now we have several company, several uh, sole proprietorship they go to put the application and we have granted several uh, a number of license for them already. So for the legal entity or foreign brand that wish to conduct business or operate e-commerce activity must apply for license at the Department of Business Registration in the Ministry of Commerce. So what type of service line that the entity that need to, to apply for the license in Ministry of Commerce? So we have e-commerce website service so for e-commerce website, so we, for example, that uh, the, the, the company that, for example, the trading company, they have, they trade clothes, they sell clothes. Normally before the uh, e-commerce work, they, they have to open their outlet in Phnom Penh, in CNOV, in CMRI, for example. And now because of the uh, technology, so they do their shopping online. So they have their own website. In the website here, they have, to show the category and they show the price, they show the term and condition, they show the payment, how the payment going to work, they show the, the delivery, how it the delivery going. So this kind of business, we call it e-commerce website services. So this is one uh, type that they need to ask for the permission. And this one is for e-commerce platform service. For example, we have Panda, we have a, a Grab here, so this, all of these services, we call it platform service. This means that, for example, that uh, the company, for example, Food Panda, actually they don't sell the, the, the food or drink or service by themselves. Actually, they just create a platform on the internet and then they open it for public, open it for a service provider to register themselves inside the platform. And then our, the public can order the food or the drink Actually, not from the food panda, but through the food panda, they link to the different shop that inside this one. So this kind of business, we call it e-commerce platform service. So we have several platform here in our Cambodia, like uh, we have Grab, we have uh, Wing, we have eGets, we have uh, WowNow and a lot. And all, almost all of these ones are uh, granting the license from Ministry of Commerce already. The third one, we call it online marketplace. So the online marketplace and, and the e-commerce platform is somehow a little bit, uh, a lot of similar, but a little bit different. What are the different is that for the online marketplace, they don't have the full cycle of uh, e-commerce market. For this one, they are full service. It means that you go there, you log in, you can uh, browse through the, the platform. If you want to, to order a drink, for example, Starbucks, you just go to Starbucks and then they have the, the price, they have the button that you can put into the basket and then make the payment and then get the delivery. So it is a full cycle inside the platform. But for the online marketplace, uh, it's not the full function here. It's just like they just create the platform, also a, a kind of platform, but it's for public. You can go there, for example, my payment. You can go there if you want to sell your, your own motorcycle or your own phone or your own car. You just go there, create the account, and then you're posting it with the price. But 
not the platform itself going to do the, the purchase, the price, the delivery, whatever condition, no. So you just put your own number and then uh, if you want to, to check the card, you want to buy the card, you need to call to the owner, not through the platform. So the platform here, it just, it's just like they build a warehouse for you and then you go there and then other people go and to talk to each other. So it is only a half of the platform service. So we call it online marketplace. And the online auction service website. So it, right now, I, I don't know that if we have this one operated in Cambodia yet because we don't have uh, the company or the individual who asking for this license yet. But we know that in, in the United States, especially for the auction of car, that a lot of people here or a dealer, car dealer here, they do, they have the, the car auction website. So this kind of website, this kind of service, we call the online auction service. So if it's available in Cambodia also, they need also to apply for the license. And other similar service provided by software or smart device for the promotion of e-commerce. For example, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have YouTube, and we have TikTok and any other means that promotion of the e-commerce. So we talk about the, the, what type of service that they need to apply for the license. So here are the requirement document that they need in, in their hand in order to apply for the license. So first one, they have the, the register in Ministry of Commerce. They have registered with tax and they have uh, got the online certificate from Ministry of Post and Communication. And we have uh, some several documents from the company. The first one is the payment method. Normally they have uh, open with bank account in, in Cambodia that recognized by the NBC. Second one, they have the document on business model and consumer protection for e-commerce. So the business model here, they, we want uh, the company that asking for the license to describe about their flow of the business. For example, that uh, I sell, I have a website that sell the food, for example. So starting from the user, they will come to my page, for example, uh, fooddelivery.com. They go into my website or they just log in to our app on the iPhone or Android with the app called Food Delivery. And then they go there, they register their account, put their information, phone number, and then they log in and they can find our service there, a lot of uh, food there. And then they click to, to, to uh, make the payment and the payment will go through the bank. What are the bank there that they can available online, for example, Visa uh, or ABA, or they can have the cash on delivery, for example, and then uh, when the, 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 the payment already in place, the service will go to the kitchen or go to the, the, the restaurant. And then they start to make the payment. They start to cook. And then how long that food going to deliver to the user? So that is one quick flow that describes about their business model. And the consumer protection policy that I have mentioned earlier in, in the law, Article 29, we have the minimum four point information that the company need to have the consumer protection clause inside there. So the very important one is about the return policy, cancel policy, refund policy, because right now there are a lot of, a lot of complaints regarding to, uh, regarding to the, the, this one, because, because in the online activity, we saw the food we saw the goods on our phone or on our tablet. So actually we don't know how big it is, how small it is. Is the color is really red or the color is really white or is the condition if the, the fabric is good or not. So we only look at the picture. So for the online business, if they good, they are very skillful in editing the picture. So they will get a lot of attraction from the public user. That's why we need all of those companies need to have their return policy, refund policy, and cancellation policy. So what if you order in the goods from this company and then actually you receive, for example, you, you order this big, actually when it comes to you on your hand, it's this small. So what can we do in this transaction? So in here, we ask them to have at least that four 
minimum requirement. So they need to state that if the goods that uh, they post online, and then when you receive, it actually is not the same in color regarding to the quality, regarding to the size that they have mentioned in their post. So you can return it back or to, to, to exchange the new one, or you can return it back to get your money back. So we will put this in form when they apply and they need to uh, obey their, their, their regulation here. So when they have a register with Ministry of Commerce, they must have this minimum condition here to apply. Uh, this one is about the same part contract agreement between intermediary and uh, e-commerce service provider for intermediary. So this one is for platform because uh, for platform, uh, they register with us, but they have a lot of service provider inside them. For example, Food Panda, they, they create a platform and under their platform, they have a lot of company, a lot of soul, a lot of individual that are going to register in that platform and they sell the goods or service under the platform. So in this platform for this intermediary, we need them to have the contract agreement between uh, the platform and uh, service provider regarding to the consumer protection policy. So for the intermediary, they are acting as a parent to control their, uh, their, their, their user inside the platform to obey the minimum information requirement. And for the, the license period is last for three years and they can be renewed. Okay, so the second point, we're going to talk about the permit for the individual or sole proprietorship. So we have the same style of formatting of the certificate, but here we have the natural person or soul that wish to conduct business or operate e-commerce activity must apply for permit administrative commerce. So this one actually in just different in, in wording use. License, we give to the company. Permit, we give to natural person or soul. Natural person here, we really refer to the individual that uh, uh, register at the national window. Either in Phnom Penh, they register at the municipal hall and in the province, they register at their uh, authority location there. And for sole proprietorship is the entity that register as a sole in Ministry of Commerce. So this one is very small, and this one is uh, the, we can call the medium type that register as sole in, in, in Ministry of Commerce as well. So this one for, for sole, what are the requirement that document that they need in order to asking for the permit in, in Ministry of Commerce? So we have, this one, as I mentioned earlier, is the, it's granted from the national uh, window service. And if they have a ton, and this is the copy of ID card. And they have either account and in which financial institution and document on business model and consumer protection also here. Online certificate, if, if they have it, because it's very small, sometimes they use uh, their they sell their product or service on Facebook, on YouTube, on uh, other means of social media. So they may not need to have the online service certificate here. So that's why we say if any. And the application, they need to fill our application form. And the validity of the permit is two years and can be renewed as well. And for the sole proprietorship, the document is almost not uh, different from, from the natural one. They have the certificate registered with Ministry of Commerce, they have an online certificate if they have it, and they register with the tax department. And they have the pay account, they have the business model, consumer protection, the same. Uh, this one, I'm going to talk a little bit on the, the non-resident e-commerce service provider. So the term here, we have the article 2 in our sub-degree. They say that Natural person, sole proprietorship, legal entity, and foreign branches that operate and conduct e-commerce activity in Cambodia or provide e-commerce service from Cambodia to abroad or from abroad to Cambodia. So this means that the transaction that going to happen in Cambodia, either inside Cambodia or from outside Cambodia, 
it is under this sub-decree. So under the sub-decree, if they fall into this scope, they need to apply for the license. And we don't state the, the non-resident need to apply for the license different from other entity, no. So if they fall into the scope here in this sub-decree, they need to apply for license. In order to apply for the license, they must register a company in Cambodia to become a legal entity. So they can take that legal entity and add the requirement to applying for the license. So it means that, for example, uh, Aon or Decathlon or Grab. So these are the non, actually they are the non-resident e-commerce that they have outside Cambodia. But because of the law state and the sub, these sub decrees state that they need to apply for license as well to do the business in Cambodia. So they will either register a foreign brand subsidiary so they can get the legal entity in Cambodia and then apply for the license. So right now we have these, all of these are applying for the license. This is what I have mentioned. And we go to the fifth point. Is on the public service fee. So for permit is uh, in dollar is gonna be fifty dollar, and for sole is one hundred dollar, and for license is uh, one million real around two hundred and fifty dollar. So this is the the public fee. We have our joint broadcast between Ministry of Commerce and uh, Ministry of Finance, and this is the I have attached you for the reference. So we, got, we go to one important point is about the exemption. So not all the e-commerce provider that uh, doing the, the good, selling good online in Cambodia, all of, not all of them going to uh, applying for permits in Ministry of Commerce. So we have the exemption. So if the service or the business that fall under the exemption, they don't need to apply for the permits in Ministry of Commerce. So they can do uh, their business without the permits. The first one is advertising that is not fall into contract proposal. So uh, for example, they on Facebook, they just uh, posting as advertisement. So they don't have the clear payment. They don't have the clear price. They don't have the clear term and condition. So they just post, for example, I have a house for sale. Actually, I just post it, where is it? Uh, how many room it, is, it has? And what are the, the location is there? And for more information, you can contact this number. Or for more information, you can go to Buray, blah, 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 blah. And this kind of uh, posting online, we call it just advertising. So for advertising purpose, you don't need to apply for a permit in Ministry of Commerce. Second one is provision for service without deposit or payment by customer or user. So for example, you go to a medical booking service website. For example, I have a clinic. And then I have an application inside the phone that uh, my patient can book it online. So for example, I go to, to, uh, to check health and then I just go to the website and then I book the accommodation time with my doctor, Dr. A, B, C, D, something like this. So in this kind of service, just booking, there's no payment inside there. There's no deposit, just booking the, the, just booking the service. That also the exemption from asking for the license or permits. The third one is the sale of good or service of a natural person or soul without return over below a small tax payer. It's also not qualified for our license or permit. Other point is uh, the seasonal or family good service. So for example, I have a farm in Comport or I have the durian farm there. And then in this season is the durian season. And then I have my, my farm is quite big. I cannot uh, only eat for my family. So I want to share to other people to, to, to have it. So I just post it on my, my, my Facebook or on my social media that I have, for example, the very good durian from Comport, something like this. One kilo is, for example, 10 or $20. So in this kind of activity that we call it seasonal goods or service here, it's also uh, exam from asking the permit from Ministry of Commerce as well. So make sure that it is seasonal for your family. So for example, uh, in this period I have durian, and then in the next period I have mango, and then in the next period I have any other product. So that also exempts them from getting the permit. 
sell personal item or artwork. For example, you are the painter, you paint a very beautiful one, and you want to, to post it online, sell it online. This is your own artwork, also exempt from asking for the license of personal training. Yeah, we have a lot of personal training online nowadays. So uh, follow my, my user or my channel, and then we have class on the training, for example, like in this picture. So this personal training also exam. National religious training or education, and you have on the Facebook now, a lot of uh, religion training, for example, um, Mr. Kuzutip, they have a lot of videos uh, on the Facebook or on the YouTube to the public. So we also not asking him to get the license and other education as well. And training by non-profit organization or operate by public institution that provides in public service. So right now we have the candy egg is from uh, Ministry of Commerce that they launch the registration platform service. So this is operated by the government, also not going to get the license from Ministry of Commerce as well. So for all of the points that I have mentioned earlier is about the exemption. So for the exemption, those business that Thing that they themselves, if unfall under the exemption, they just go to, to, to fill a very short form to put their name, uh, their business objective, and where they, 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 they have it, and then just email to us. So this one, when you think that your company or individual that doing the business online, and you think that yourself, you meet all the criteria that I have mentioned earlier, that fall into exemption, you just pay, uh, you just uh, uh, type through this uh, application form and send it by email to Ministry of Commerce. So it's just a notification. You don't need to submit by yourself or you don't have to pay anything. So just email, write it down and then scan it and email to us just to get the, the document. We need to note that. And sometimes we need to check either that uh, what you are doing, it fall under exemption or not. And for the procedure, right now we have our website, ecommercelicensing.moc.gov.kh. You guys can go to this uh, address and then we have plenty of information regarding to the law, regarding to the sub-decree, the request that I have mentioned here, all in there. The application form also we put in there and other related and our new notification also, we will update every information update there. So I just show you uh, the, the application form. Actually, the form here is inside the website. You can go there and browse through a little bit and you will see that this form, this form is for the license and this form is for natural person. This one is for soul. And this one just a, a sample like for business model that you need to, to complete it for the consumer protection policy. And you can just, this one is for notify, you just uh, complete the application form for notify and then email it to us. And this is, uh, I just want to highlight a little bit what we have done recently. So we really have issued a podcast regarding to create a working group to promote the implementation of the law of e-commerce. And we have a lot of responsibility here. So in this class, we have the working group between our, um, uh, our mentee at the province. They have 20, 24 uh, in the province that serve for the Ministry of Commerce inside here. And then in the, next, in the near future, we will go, we will scan through all of the online users on Facebook, on Telegram, or they have application form that they have done request for the license, and then we will uh, take the action, either go to directly to their business uh, operation, or we do the announcement by, if we cannot find it the in actual address, we will try
try to, to find the email or phone number and then we notify one by one. And we have, uh, this one is the latest announcement on delaying the penalty for applying the e-commerce license or permit. So in this notify here, the deadline is on 1st July 2022. So I think it's only 10 days left for the delay of penalty. So the penalty, as I have mentioned earlier in our law, if we found out that the company is doing business online without license, so we will fine them or penalty them until 10 million reals. So when this, I think uh, uh, we don't do any more delay on this one. So after this period, we will put it to action. Okay, thank you. That, that's all for my presentation. And uh, if you have the question, you can wait until the, the uh, question and answer time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wanchai, for your insightful presentation. Uh, next, uh, I'm delighted to present to you our guest of honor, uh, His Excellency Dr. Ian Rotana, Director at Large Taxpayer Department at the General Department of Taxation, to come up and present on uh, VAT e-commerce for non-residents. So please give him a warm welcome. Mr. Thomas Hedgeet, Deputy Director of Eurocharm Cambodia, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really delighted to be invited to join this workshop on e-commerce this morning, organized by Eurocharm. I think, uh, e-commerce is very new for Cambodia. Why the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and also e-commerce, also e uh, pandemic also, because there is no COVID-19 pandemic, I think the uh, e-commerce the e may develop very slow in Cambodia. Currently, in Cambodia, try to use buy and and sell goods through e-commerce. So they start to know e-commerce before COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. I think that most people in Cambodia may not know, and only people in 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 Phnom Penh. Some of people in the more income, but the poor people, they don't know how to use the electronic device. But currently, most people, especially young people. And for my presentation this morning, I cover only e-commerce, the sell good digital goods and services from overseas, not covers local sale of digital goods and services. Because if taxpayer they supply digital goods and services locally, they have to comply with the local law that we have been implemented a long time. They must register if they, for example, like a lady sell online, if they turn, is she turn over mid threshold, she had to come to register 250 million per year turnover, but not cover for my presentation this morning. My presentation this morning only cover non-resident, the sale digital goods and services to Cambodia only. So 
tôi The number one, I put objective. That's why I mentioned already. Objective, the scope is cover only non-resident. They supply digital goods and services to Cambodia. Not cover the lady sell online locally. And number two, definition. Number three, uh, simplify what legislation I think may have some question with some issue between TDT and MOC, like the gentleman, is the, I forget his name. Yeah, he present already. I think uh, all participants may have question whether it's a PE or not, if the need is the MOC as an entity. If for tax purpose, if register as entity, a sole proprietorship, partnership, or company limited, they must have PE and have, they have to pay income tax in Cambodia. But for us, for VAT on e-commerce, it's only VAT, register what they call simplified what registration. I think maybe we have some problem. I think all participants here may have doubt whether how to comply. So we will discuss uh, later. And the VAT return and the payment method. And number five, uh, withholding tax regime and VAT rule. Uh, number six, implementation date. Number seven, uh, penalty. Number eight, future development for implementation of the e-rule. And lastly, uh, the role of bank and internet service providers. Uh, the sub degree 65, actually, uh, it, the law on taxation mentioned about the if GDT have any obstacle or any problem to collect VAT, the general department of taxation had the right to issue regulation to collect VAT. So the question why long times ago GDT not implement at the call 65. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, 75 uh, of the law on taxation. Because a long time ago, if we implement the what uh, e-commerce, it's not the time, the right time, because at that time, the uh, e-commerce have, that I mentioned earlier, have, have not developed. And if we collect, uh, uh, we can collect small number of uh, VAT and also most people they don't aware of the e-commerce and most company also not sell overseas company uh, overseas they don't sell digital goods and services more to Cambodia just during the COVID nineteen and meet people cannot meet each other. So they can use online. So it's the right time for GDT to implement the Article 75. That's why GDT issue the uh, sub-degree 65. And after that, to clarify the sub-degree, we issue the instruction 2522. Oh, sorry, of, of 542 uh, after that. Uh, 25 to 2, and after that, we need to clarify uh, more because when we start to implement, actually, myself research, some, some research have clear instruction, but some point we don't have mentioned in internet, and we need to ask other tax administration in Asian country but some issues that answer clearly many countries have implemented differently sometimes. That's why we should instruct uh, the sub uh, the, the, the broadcast after that so that clear some taxpayer, especially like uh, big company like the Google, uh, Facebook, and Microsoft and uh, Netflix, a big company we have been uh, working 
especially with Mr. Clean here. Yeah, we discuss if we find the solution, a win-win solution. So our existing regulation and broadcast, some point need to be clarified. That's why uh, we issue uh, why a question, why issue broadcast one and then broadcast and instruction, instruction uh, so many times because we need to clarify some issue because we need to learn also. Today we learn from all of you some issue need to be clarified. We need to issue instruction and also at some point need to explain. We need to have seminar or, or the uh, uh, workshop. But GDT uh, conducted uh, a lot of workshop and seminar, but I don't think all people know uh, clearly about that. We need to do continue to do uh, 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 the workshop or seminar. Like today is a part of our uh, service provider, the Takpia service. So today I will listen from all of you whether our instruction, our regulation is clear for implementation or need to clarify some more. But our instruction issue on eight, eight, um, all eight, right? <laughs> on the date eight, 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 except this one. <laughs> if no Saturday or public holiday, maybe eight also. <laughs> the last one is an instruction uh, 13099 is uh, to instruct how to pay through online because uh, uh, a company overseas, they don't have PE in Cambodia, they pay through uh, uh, online. We need to instruct them how to, to pay, for example, like they pay on the, uh, uh, by using the uh, uh, credit card, visa card, and, and bank transfer. So we need to issue this. The, the purpose is uh, to determine the special condition and to set out the mechanism for implementation VET or digital goods and services that consume in Cambodia by non resident but non resident have no PE. I clear the coverage here. The goal, the purpose I mentioned already. The, the ladies are online, so not covered by this PROCA uh, or regulation. And also the supply, the supply of digital goods and all services or e-commerce activities with a electric system carried out by non-resident supplier to consumer in Cambodia. Sell to consumer. Digital, digital good for to Intangible, not cover tangible. Tangible collected by custom department. Because the business, traditional business chain from physical to electronic transaction. Before, let's say, for example, like the uh, cinema, if you need to buy cinema uh, in the long times ago, you had to buy CV, right? And the seller need to import CD and have to pay custom duty. Currently, you don't need. And also the Netflix and also the cinema company overseas don't need to import CD to Cambodia. So the custom department cannot levy VAT or import duty. Because they sell through internet. Like Netflix. So we have high VAT, we leave it VAT only in tangible good. This is our uh, uh, coverage because we discuss with custom department when we uh, try the, the distribution. See that for the physical good, leave it by custom department. Only intangible good, 
that is procure, supply, and fully transfer various electric platform. So three, three important items. Procure, supply, and fully transfer by electronic platform. Digital service refer to service that is operated via, via electronic platform. So, electric uh, e-commerce or electric commerce or e-commerce refer to activity of purchasing, selling, listing, or exchanging or digital products or digital service as well as electric commercial and civil commercial transaction that conducted via electronic platform. And all electronic platform operator mean non-resident taxpayer who provides services, receives payment and delivers digital goods or digital service to buyer via electronic platform on behalf, on behalf of non-resident supplier. Business to business transaction, B2B, refer to the supply of good, the, the good or services from one enterprise to another enterprise. And business to consumer, B we call in short, B2C, it refer to supply of good or services from one enterprise to consumer. Reward charge is a mechanism that uh, recipient or digital good or digital service we electric platform to account for value in the on behalf of supplier on taxable value. In our sub degree uh, 65 mentioned 8 point, 18 point about the, the transition subject to BT on e-commerce. I don't detail. I think all of you have. Non-resident platform operators is a non-resident taxpayer who provides service, receive payment, and deliver digital goods or digital service to buyer via electric uh, platform on behalf of non-resident supplier. So we leave VAT from operator. They place order. The people place order or from the platform. The platform, they may sell digital goods and services for the supplier. And also they can uh, supply good or digital good or services by their own. We don't leave VAT from the merchant because we, it's not easy to find because who collect money, provide, provide service, receive payment, and deliver good, we leave VAT from those operator because we cannot find the owner as a good, digital good. For example, like they, they, if they, they uh, have the video game, they, they uh, sell the video game through the uh, uh, platform operator. We don't know where the owner, but we tag from, we charge VAT from platform operator. The platform operators have application to register as simplified what session and collect VAT 10%. Instead of my chain, we using platform to sell the product while what return and make payment to GDT. I mentioned already. So the platform here is it's been that it's non-resident. It don't have PE in Cambodia. I I said many times, if they have PE, not covered by this regulation. It's, they have no PE. Taxable person divided by, divided by two, what a non-resident taxpayer who supply digital goods or digital service or e-commerce activity, including electronic platform, platform operator in, in Cambodia, that met Simplify what is is they have turnovers uh, starting from 250 million real per year. 
and also we define as the taxable person for sales assessment taxpayer who purchase digital good and services from non resident also they are, they they are obliged to apply with river charge and pay the gdt also the the question for simplify what it is are you a non resident who supply digital goods or services or e commerce activity to consumer in cambodia it's no no need to register and just whether they have pe or not pe is mean the permanent establishment in cambodia krista and then try if they have pe no no need to register because the pe when the the the, the enterprise or the company have pe in cambodia they need to comply gt law and regulation have been implemented long time the pay income tax also but for simplify what it is session they don't need to pay income tax currently they pay only vat child vat and pay is no the question do you have a estimated turnover uh, to meet the threshold or not is no meet the threshold less than turnovers per year less than 250 million rupees per year no need to register a simply simply by what it is it's just just a must register within 30 day and the registration can be online e registration or uh, uh, physical registration with the tax service agent and the uh, where the register it take only seven to fit, uh, 10 working day i think more faster than this we try to help because this is a new in implementation we need to help the non resident uh, supplier to register faster even in a forecast 7 to 10 working day we can register faster if they provide a, a sufficient document and the fee a new registration around 100 uh, 400000 real and update information uh, 20000 real not expensive require document uh, for the VT registration, the application uh, for simplify, simplify by registration, certificate of business registration of non resident taxpayer. It's been that the certificate from overseas resident uh, company, they, they need to have, they, 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 have, they must have the certificate of registration in their own country. Valid identity document of owner or representative ID card or passport or representative. Most big big company, multinational company, uh, they have the representative because they listed in the stock market. They have no, they cannot find the, the owner. So they have the appointed uh, director, appointed uh, uh, representative. The two current passport, upper of photo, Certify multiply uh, 45 millimeter with white background. Non resident taxpayer book account document issue or printed from non resident taxpayer bank account. We don't need the local bank account because, according to law and taxation, if the company have bank account in Cambodia, can be treated as they have PE in Cambodia, they subject income tax. So we don't need to have bank account in Cambodia, but they just they have to provide the printed uh, bank account from non-resident taxpayer bank. And the document uh, should, should be in English or Cambodian language. But more popular is English, right? Most uh, company they they operate overseas, they, they may have 
a document in English. If they don't have, they need to translate in English. Otherwise, for example, like from Japan, from Korea, from China, we don't have the Taoist or in Chinese or they don't know the Chinese language or English language or uh, uh, Japanese or Korean language. Need to translate into English. After the registration is completed, the CDT can provide certificate of simplified one registration. Identity card for tax registration, notification letter on tax obligation, and non resident taxpayer shall notify GDP if there is any update or change taxpayer information after register. If they register already, like the uh, one company, they register already. After that, they, uh, the management, the representative, uh, the, I don't know, the file or the, they apply for leave from the company. They need to, the company have obligation to inform PT and update information. If the pager fail to register or not register after turnover, meet the threshold or being invited, PT have the right to register unilaterally for the but simplified situation. If the GDT know that any and the uh, non-resident supplier who have turnover made the threshold uh, more than 250 million real, they don't come to register, PT invite them or still they don't come, PT and register unilaterally. BT it is is due and paid on the time of supply. The time of supply referred to for non-resident uh, supplier. The earlier that when invoice is issued or when the digital good is delivered or digital service is rendered or payment is received. Which one is earlier? Invoice issue or digital good is delivered or service, digital service is rendered or the payment is due. Which one is earlier? For the resident taxpayer, it means that self assessment. Taxpayer, we have, uh, they, 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 need, they have to uh, uh, apply the charge. Is the earlier that when the digital good or is received or digital service is rendered or the payment is due or paid? It's due or paid. It's not paid. Not pay yet, but it's you also we consider as a price. You have to pay in that in this period. But we you pay on a monthly basis, not on a daily basis. So if if a due date in any day in the month, you have to pay in the following month. For the uh, non resident suppliers, uh, the question does the supplier provide digital goods or services or e-commerce activity to consumer in Cambodia? It's no, no need. Okay, VAT is yes. Have to think about if they provide enough information, we have important uh, requirement. They have the PIN number and bank account. If they don't provide the two important information, they must charge VAT 10%. For this, yes, if they provide the PIN number and register account, bank account to the supplier, no need to charge VAT and the purchaser have to apply the reverse charge and pay the GDT and fill the form the, in Appendix VAT01, I mentioned in Appendix 2. And this point, does the supplier provide taxable or non-taxable supplier to individual or entity who is not registered for tax in Cambodia? It means a B2C. It normally, a B2C is no register, no TIN number. So they must charge VT and the field of form. And charge VT 10%. So ask the sales assessment tax payer if you purchase digital goods and services from overseas, whether the supplier, resident 
non-resident uh, supplier register or not, you must apply the overcharge 10% and pay to the fee. Suppose you buy, for example, like the game, the game from overseas or the software from non-resident supplier, they don't register, you have to apply the overcharge 10% and pay to the T. Pay to the T. But if you don't provide the important information, pin number and bank account, the register non-resident supplier must charge you from you 10% pay to the pay to GDT. And the payment is uh, if you pay manual 20 out of following month and you pay uh, online if I link uh, 25 out of following month. The method of uh, payment we pay directly or via e payment for local payment. Non resident taxpayer can appoint a representative or tax agent, service agent. Or red and big payment on behalf, or you can pay uh, through credit card or debit card, or transfer from foreign uh, bank account. I mentioned already we issue the instruction, new instruction uh, to clarify how you can pay the GDT. Issue invoice the, the non resident supplier when they sell digital goods and digital services to purchaser in Cambodia, they must issue invoice with the, the information name, address, and simplify what uh, tax identification number for non-resident. You own PIN number when you register as the simplify what registration. And name and address and all VATT number customer is to sell to taxpayer or, or sales assessment taxpayer and invoice put number and date. Normally, they must have num uh, 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 number and date. And subscription, description of the digital goods and services and taxable value and VAT or total value of tax also supply include VAT. So if you sell to consumer, you can put total amount include VAT or the separate VAT is up to you. But if you sell to uh, assessment taxpayer, you must uh, state clearly how much uh, uh, VAT, how much uh, taxable value. In case uh, they don't provide uh, bank account. I mentioned already, if they have provide only uh, pin number. Why we put the condition the item bank account? Because we think that if we require only pin number support myself, I can order for personal use. I can use order company pin, pin number. I place order. Finally, I don't use for the company. I use my, for my own. But if we have two information, pin number and bank account, it's not easy to make up, right? To produce the, the same information, the bank, uh, the bank, uh, commercial bank may not register for you or you cannot uh, have the bank account information. So we, have, we need to have two information to clarify that the purchaser uh, is or are sales assessment tax payer. That's why we require two information. Because we think that if the, the purchaser they provide two information, pin number and bank account name, it's a real sales assessment tax payer. It's not uh, other people or consumer. The invoice can issue in foreign language, but it must have English or Khmer. English acceptable because some foreigner is, is, 
a legal way from Cambodia. They don't know Cambodia. They can supply digital goods and services to Cambodia. That's why we don't require in Khmer. Just English is enough. For example, from B to C in May 2020, none is that uh, taxpayers. A supply digital good to consumer in Cambodia. It's not the assessment taxpayer, it's the consumer, which costs, including VAT, uh, for 50,000 so big, actually, cut to, because the sales consumer, they cannot pay 50,000. <laughs> right? The consumer cannot pay. Uh, uh, 50,000 is too big man, amount. None is that there are a sort issue involved, including VT 55,000, and all issue involved or digital goods and services 50,000 plus VT 10%, 5,000. To put only 50 is what in five because it's just a consumer cannot pay a uh, big amount like that, right? <laughs> so the uh, flow chart of the B to C, the uh, non-resident this year, the mass register when they, they have turnover, this, it's, this company is a turnover mid sold 250 million per year, the supply to Cambodia, the mass register, and the, this lady place order, and the non-resident supplier have issue invoice. Uh, thousand and plus VT ten percent and five thousand pay to GDT. This is a uh, responsible to pay to GDT for this for the ten percent uh, between this two consumer. This is a consumer. It's not register a tax payer. The consumer. We call in short it says C consumer business. This is a business sell to consumer. The sale assessment for sale assessment. It still supply digital goods or services or any e-commerce activity from non-resident uh, taxpayer who, who sim simplify what situation. If you receive digital uh, goods or services or e-commerce activity, including electronic platform from a simplify what situation non-resident supplier and have, and have you provided a supplier with PIN number, make payment using account owned bank at the company account, it's yes. <coughs> it, it's all good as we see at ET considering uh, what uh, supp uh, taxable supply, taxable supply, in no, you don't need to pay. But you must report. Report in the form uh, VT, uh, VT02. And yes, must pay with <coughs> which uh, reward charge VT 10% and fill the form and pay PDT. <coughs> so this is a reward charge. <coughs> the purchaser has application to. <coughs> Apply with chart, uh, pay the GDT. And I have water. Take my glass. <clears throat> Thank you. What amount was paid by uh, sales assessment taxpayer under the charge mechanism to be allowed us to calculate it? So in the month, the sales assessment taxpayer who apply <coughs> the charge, he can record the VAT paid to non uh, to GDT as input tax and can claim credit for the month. And the Input allow uh, follow the, the sub degree article 29 to 31, uh, 39 and 41. Include only article 40, article 40 in sub degree uh, mentioned about the 
invoice procedure. So for non-resident, you cannot follow the info, invoice procedure as mentioned in some degree. <clears throat> so I state again this in English invoice must issue in English uh, in Khmer. It's about to be to be. It's sell business to business. For example, the same date, the non-resident taxpayer A supply digital good to company B, who is a sales assessment taxpayer. Non-resident uh, taxpayer A saw issue invoice, including VAT 4,000. The company B made the payment of 4,000 to uh, non-resident uh, supplier A. Then company B shall calculate VAT based on amount of 4,000 multiplied by 10% equal 400. What we call what we are charged and pay to, to PDT. This is a B calculate by its own and pay to the T by its own. What they call your charge. B. <laughs> This is a supplier. This is sales assessment. Yeah. They supply, they buy the sales assessment with a company in Cambodia and be a sole proprietorship and be the partnership or have no partnership. Uh, I don't know why they don't, don't register as a partnership in Cambodia, even one also. There's no partnership operate in Cambodia. Maybe you have any, they have, we have no any incentive, right? Or any, they start, they establish the co LTD easier than partnership. Even the professional, also in most countries in the world, they start the company, the, the, the business with the partnership, like the doctor or lawyer, doctor. even Mr. Clean here, your company is co LTD, right? Actually, most countries in the world is. They set up partnership. But Cambodia have law partnership, but have no. But even one also have no. Who 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 know why? I cannot answer, but I think that may no incentive, right? <laughs> so this is can be uh, uh, the sole partnership or part, uh, company register as a sales assessment company. They play order to sub. Na, sub, supplier non-resident and the supplier non-resident issue invoice to the company for thousand only and the they pay the uh, the assessment pay to non-resident for thousand only but the assessment itself had to calculate the charge ten percent based on the value this one for thousand multiplied by ten percent four hundred what we call the charge and pay to PDT but at the same time. This tax payer, assessment tax payer, can claim input tax for the month. The question whether when you pay your assessment tax payer, you apply real charge with 10%, whether you still have to pay with own tax or not? The answer yes. Both. Because VAT levy from the consumer or user of Digital good on all services. But the withholding tax is levy from the people who earn income. It's levy through withholding agent. People who earn income is a kind of income tax. The withholding tax is kind of income tax that levy from people who earn income. So the non resident supplier who earn money from Cambodia source of income is Cambodian. Cambodia source of income because they earn money from Cambodia, they must pay some income tax. Our law, they will levy income tax through withholding agent. It's withholding agent, it means that assessment tax payer. On the type of income such as uh, services, rent, interest, royalty, uh, dividend, etc., to pay to the tax person. The applicable uh, rate, it depends on whether the recipient or the income are resident or non-resident. So, also, if you have DTA with Cambodia, you apply the, the incentive, 10% rate, you pay, you apply 10% if you don't have, 
fourteen percent. It depend on the uh, the country. The capital have the thirty uh, those country. The implementation actually uh, our was broadcast issue on 17 January 2020, but we postponed by issue, uh, MES issue broadcast 142, and uh, determine the effective date of implementation for 1st April 2022. But in real practice, we encourage uh, the non-resident supplier come to register even they late a little bit, but still allow them to register. The taxable person shall be penalized as state in the law and taxes and the same uh, 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 resident uh, taxpayer. And fail to register or fail to update the operation, fail to file a tax return, and fail to pay tax amount. Can say, can ask me the question how can you penalize? If those non compliant don't have tax your premise in Cambodia, don't have location, don't have contact number, it's, it's, it's still a question from most uh, tax in the world. Also, we ask the Australian or the Korea or, uh, and Japan, and also they are facing the same issue. But more large company, especially multinational company, if they don't come to Pista, if we do tax reassessment and we add penalty and we put in the new, I think the shareholder, the, the, the market sale will go down, I think. And those tax payer, they have they what they call the, uh, the, uh, the uh, business ethic, corporate ethic, they comply the law. Mostly they comply the law, like the, we had experience with. Uh, Mr. Clean here, by them, they want to know Cambodian law tax and they want to comply. They say that they promise us they comply 100%. If any regulation issue, they want to comply. They want to know exactly how to comply properly. Most of multinational companies, they have their own uh, business ethic. If any resident, non resident uh, supplier, they don't they fail to comply the law. We can do tax reassessment and put penalty and invite them through the counterparty, the PA, or we can uh, publish in newspaper and we do uh, different means. We learn from different countries. In Australia also, we learn from Australia. They have different means to invite them to register. But very effective mean is that put the newspaper, if they don't come all, they cooperate with the, the DTA party, counterparty, tell the duck vision in those countries, tell us to invite them to pay. But suppose they don't come, I think market share go down. Because uh, the owners, not only one guy, only one people, right? They sometimes the people in the world, uh, the shareholder, they buy the share, According to the e VAT on e-commerce regulation, the non-resident taxpayer supply digital goods and digital service and e-commerce into the Kingdom of Cambodia not required to have a PE. That's why I considered we may have some problem, the question uh, between the GDT law and regulation and e-commerce uh, law or, or, or uh, with the uh, uh, Ministry of Commerce, I think as a gentleman uh, present. Uh, presented already, but we implement only the non resident who have no PE in Cambodia. If they have PE, they must register and also they comply with our law and regulation that have been implemented long time. Currently, GDT have, uh, does not have any update related to the implementation of PE rule for e commerce activity. I think some most of you know the OECD uh, development uh, uh, procedure. They have pillow one, pillow two. It's just a research, they're not uh, consensus yet. When the OECD put in place or 
approve for example like the ILF for SME before and they approve I had experience before I joined the committee to set up for the form what they call the create a form or the SME finally can be used you waste uh, money you pay at the time I don't know when so much money to produce a, a form or SME finally when SSAB International Contestant Board approve SME standard no more that form gonna be used. So now we wait for the OECD approval. The, the pillar, pillar one, pillar two, and not consensus, especially in Europe. So still question, because some country, you, you may know, right? The uh, Australia and France have problem with US. You know, they cut, they stop uh, the Google at that time, right? Yeah. The, US or Australia and also France uh, want to leave income tax, but the US not agree to pay US company. Because the PE still PE, I think based on the pillar one, pillar two established by OECD, it's, it's not related to PE, I know. So they established a new rule for taxing right for developing country or Developed country who uh, uh, receive the supply, digital goods and services from overseas, but it's not change the PE rule, as I know. It's correct, Quinn? It's not change because the PE rule is a long time ago. There's no PE, no taxation. It's a rule, long time, traditional rule. You change no PE, it, you tax income tax, may have problem. But they try to set up a new rule for e-commerce because everything changed right now in the world. Uh, currently, the uh, local partner, uh, partner bank or GDT have the role to receive the tax payment from the non-resident tax payer. GDT is uh, studying and going to research regarding the way to use the bank to enforce non compliant in other country. We learn from other country. We don't know how to do right now. But uh, I think other country, they have the internet gateway. For example, if you go to other uh, overseas, even Thailand, when you turn on internet, advertising is nice. Even you want to watch commercial, it starts with uh, Thai advertising first. It means that you control everything before go any the product go to their own con to the country. They have internet gateway. We have no so currently, but my boss, is an Kong Bo, request uh, to the, the government to the ministry also to we should have the internet gateway and the payment gateway. Otherwise, we cannot catch up the transaction from other country. I think it's not on Thai, uh, only Thailand, on different country. When you travel overseas, you stay in a hotel, you turn on or you uh, turn on the internet. We want to watch a Khmer show or any other product in, in Cambodia. You see the advertising on their own country. It means that internet can be you control. Cannot free like Cambodia. Cambodia free, right? We cannot catch up the transaction. That's why this we need to research. Otherwise, we cannot catch up. Now, based on volunteer compliance first. I mentioned it's a large company. They have their corporate ethic. They have to come. If you don't come, they will have problem with GDT. They will put, we will do reassessment, target reassessment, and put all the newspaper, or, and it can do uh, whatever we can. Uh, to enforce the non compliant GDT, I mentioned already, they, they will uh, cooperate with the telecom ministry to block ISP, internet uh, uh, service provider, and the domain can block. But we need to research and so study with the uh, ministry of the telecom, otherwise, I think uh, the implementation will, will not be successful. We need to learn. And also some country also, they, they, they change the rule day by day, month by month. 
because everything new happened for the current situation since the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. It's uh, the change and also the new startup, a different way, especially the young generation, they were so smart. <laughs> they create a different product, a new product. The tax reason in the world have, they are facing the issue. So thank you. Thank you, His Excellency, for your detailed presentation and insights. Uh, now I'd like to present to you the Q&A session um, led by Mr. Matthew Tippetts, Chairman of Your Jam Digital and Technology Committee and founder of, and CEO of Click Asia Session. And in the panel, we have uh, Mr. Clint O'Donnell, partner and head of Cambodia Tax Practice of DFDL. And uh, we have Mr. Hoi Munchai, uh, official chief of business registration department at the MOC. And also His Excellency, uh, Dr. Ian Rotana on the panel. So if you have any questions, you can ask after the panel. And uh, for the online participants, if you have any questions, you can drop in the chat box. So please uh, give a warm welcome. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be uh, to be here with all of you, and uh, also to uh, uh, moderate this panel. So once again, thanks a lot, Your Excellency, for for joining us, and uh, uh, Mr. Bujai and and Clint. So, um, what we'll do is I'll go through some basic questions. So please forgive me if these are very uh, simple questions and dumb questions. It's just that I think they're basic questions uh, so that everybody can, can make sure that uh, uh, we, we have the same understanding. And then we'll open it if we have time to, to people in the, uh, in the attendance online, as well as here, uh, if you have any questions. So we'll start with uh, one where myself, I, uh, I was a little bit confused. Um, so, do foreign companies, which basically uh, fulfill the requirement of you know, doing more than a certain amount as per the law, and this is really a question for the, for, for the MOC, um, these companies which do a minimum amount of revenues, do they need to get the e-commerce license in any case, right? My understanding is that yes, that's the whole purpose of the law, uh, that you, you would confirm that, right? Okay. So the next question is, now, do these companies uh, need to set up a branch or a subsidiary in Cambodia for getting the license? Okay, thank you for the questions. Um, as we have mentioned by the law earlier that uh, in order to get the license from the Ministry of Commerce on e-commerce transaction, they need to uh, fulfill the requirement. And one first requirement that we have stated in Brakas is that they have, they need to have registered with Ministry of Commerce. So under our the sub degree, we mentioned that all of the service that either from outside to Cambodia or in Cambodia are fall into category of applying for license of e-commerce. So if for the non-resident uh, service provider that are from overseas 
for example, uh, for example, Amazon. So right now we, we don't have the, uh, any regulation yet, like uh, His Excellency have mentioned the internet gateway yet that we need to uh, either need to ban them or stop their service from outside to Cambodia if they don't have the license from Ministry of Commerce. So under that uh, sub degree, we put the scope very clear that all the service either from uh, outside the country or inside the country need to obtain the license. But in order to get the license, we need to register as a legal entity here in Cambodia, either as a foreign branch or subsidiary here in Cambodia. So the answer is that they need to set up a company inside Cambodia in order to perform the transaction in Cambodia. Okay, and, and that would mean that they would effectively have a permanent establishment in Cambodia by exactly. de facto. Exactly, yes. Okay, understood. Um, the second question again for, for, for Mr. Uh, Rui. Um, now, let's assume that you are a seller in Cambodia and that you have a contract with an intermediary, uh, for example, uh, a foreign marketplace by which you sell your stuff. Um, do you then have to get a permit for, uh, for doing this uh, as an e-commerce permit because you're an individual selling via this intermediary? Thank you for the question. It's a very, very important question. And uh, I got this question a lot from uh, the service provider as well. So the answer is no. And the reason behind the no is that because the intermediary, that platform is already registered with us because they already get the license from us. And inside the requirement of getting that license is that they need to have a contract sample between the platform or intermediary and the service provider that stated the enough minimum uh, consumer protection. So uh, in simple way to talk is that the platform itself is acting as just like uh, the Ministry of Commerce to control their service provider that operating inside the platform. So that contract must, uh, including the term condition regarding to the refund policy, cancel policy, the same as we require the uh, platform to have. So the platform, they need also to, to require the service provider inside the platform to have the same minimum requirement. But those inside the platform, inside that intermediary, they don't need to ask for license or permit from Ministry of Commerce if they are serve their business, do their business inside that intermediary. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, again, another question for you, which is if a company is registered with the MOC, uh, let's say a .co.ltd as, as usual, um, what are the additional documents they would require to get uh, a license, an e-commerce license? Okay, thank you for the question. This is also the alert one. So as we have mentioned earlier in, in our slide, uh, we mentioned that the company that need to run for the e-commerce they need to have a registered company and they need to have uh, other uh, required document and, and, and the procedure. So the, the, the question uh, that uh, have raised is that if I already uh, have registered the company and right now in this market, in order to increase the revenue, I want to have the company online, to sell online, to have the platform, to have the application in the phone. So what I need to do, if I need to register another company or I can take that uh, previous company, existing company to do. So the answer is that you can just use your own company. And the first requirement is that you need to have the business objective that can operate the e-commerce transaction. So inside the extract, company extract, or inside the, the MOA, the Memorandum of Article Association, you have the list of business objective. If your company, the existing company, uh, don't have that business code yet. You can just add the business that, uh, like, the number is 479, and that is the retail sale online or, or marketplace. 
So you just add this objective inside your, your company extract, and then you can uh, apply for the license the same as what we have mentioned in the broadcast. Uh, the requirement is the same as the new company. So just to add uh, this one code, business code is enough, and then you can uh, asking for applying for the, the, the license. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my next question is for you, uh, Excellency. Um, it's concerning, of course, uh, VAT and, and withholding tax. So uh, let's assume this is a Cambodian registered company, which is buying products or services from a non-resident company. So obviously, according to the law, uh, there would have to be VAT on that transaction. Um, now, would there also have to be withholding tax on that transaction? Thank you for your question. As I mentioned during my presentation already, uh, the two, two different uh, taxes. So withholding tax is a levy from people who earn income that I mentioned already. The non-resident, the supply digital goods and services to Cambodia, they derive income from Cambodia. It's, Cambodia is a source of income. The, the tax and resident of Cambodia have to levy withholding tax. The, uh, 14% if the, con the, the country that have no DTA with Cambodia, if they have no DTA with, DTA with Cambodia, they can apply for the, the, uh, uh, the rate of 10%. So 10% apply with holding tax. And for VAT, VAT on e-commerce, VAT is a tax levy from the consumer or user of the digital goods and services. So... It's not a burden of the company, actually. The company, as I mentioned already, the company applied the website. After that, they can claim input tax for the month. As a credit, if they have the output tax to deduct the input tax, they don't need. The company is in the memory. It's not the, the person who consumes goods and services. Not the consumer, because they buy uh, the digital goods and services for uh, supply of the uh, uh, the uh, good or services to consumer to charge VAT, so they have output tax. Uh, after that, they can be that with input tax uh, that the uh, have paid the uh, through the uh, uh, river charge. So the VAT is I repeat again, VAT is levy from the consumer or the user of digital goods or services, different type of tax. So withholding tax have been implemented long time. It's not uh, stopped since the VAT on e-commerce implemented. It continue. And currently, the company have to apply two tax. One, VAT, by the website, and second, the withholding tax that have been implemented long time, no question, I think. So to they have to uh, pay both. But the meaning is different. Uh, different. If one, VAT levy from consumer. Yeah, but the VAT that they pay through uh, a river charge is not the burden of the company. The company can claim as import tax. But for withholding tax, the company has been implemented a long time. I think it should not have question. They have to apply. 14% or 10% it depend on the country that have DTA with Cambodia or not. If they have DTA, they can apply for the incentive 10% tax rate based on the DTA. And if they have no, they apply 14%. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Question for uh, Clint. Um, from your experience, um, do banks need to get the e-commerce license as they can do a lot of online businesses, right, with their mobile banking and so on. Uh, that's probably more of a question for the MOC, maybe more of a tax guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, actually, inside the law, we have mentioned that uh, the definition of intermediary, and inside the definition, we have one line that's talking about the uh, uh, 
e-commerce uh, service payment provider. So the banking system that they have online right now, because almost all the bank right now, they have online system doing the same work as the offline system. It means that you can go to open account, not directly to the bank now, you just have your phone. You scan your ID card, you take the picture, and then you fill information. You can open your bank account at home or anywhere you have the internet. You want to deposit the money, uh, also you don't have to go to the bank. You just go to uh, the, the ATM machine or whatever, and then you can transfer the money, you can take loan. Actually, the, the same process from the physical go to the bank and the online. So this law, also cover the payment service provider. But in our sub-degree, we not mention, we exclude this one. They, they don't need to request for the license from the Ministry of Commerce because they are under control from the National Bank of Cambodia and the online payment also under control of Ministry of Post and Communication. So if uh, the, the NBC that issuing the license and state that they can uh, operating the banking system service in Cambodia. So either that they, they operating in, in physical world or they operating in online world, as long as their operation is the same under the control of NBC and to go online, they under control of Ministry of Power. So they don't need to, to request the license from MOC. But if inside that uh, application, if they have one uh, category that they provide business, e-commerce business, for example, they can have the link for the, the, the vendor, for the supplier to go there, register there, and then have some uh, service to provide to the consumer. So that point we need to asking for the license. But if no that point, just normal banking service, so uh, the bank don't need to uh, ask for the license. Okay, thank you. Um, coming back to, to, to the MOC and on the uh, documents required for, for getting the license or the permit, um, is there going to be an automated service for enabling mm -hmm. this in the future? Thank you for the question. Um, we now we have the, the, the website that everyone can go there and then get the document, get the, uh, our uh, legal document and even the, the application form there, they can fill in the application form there, but uh, we don't have the full automation system yet. But MOC nowadays is working on this one, uh, maybe at the end of this year, 2000, uh, December or early of 2023, we will have a full automatic system that uh, Everyone can go there, go to the website, register payment and get the certificate online. And we even uh, working with the, the Ministry of Finance with the uh, registration platform team, KMTH, and we're gonna be there in the phase three as well. So in phase one, we have um, Ministry of Commerce, GDT, and NCC of uh, Labor in phase one. And then phase two, we have many, many uh, um, the three in the phase two and phase three. Uh, now we are working with them to have uh, e-commerce license also inside the phase three. So uh, later on, we'll be uh, on one platform to get the license. Yeah. Okay. Um, a question for you, Your Excellency. Um, one of the uh, complicated parts for um, reporting VAT, especially if it's uh, an e-commerce transactions which is a B2B transaction. Um, up to now, is my understanding correct that that transaction has to be paid via the same bank account that has been registered for tax purposes by uh, the, the one paying the taxes? Is, is that correct? Um, thank you for your question. This is, uh, I think, this is a sticky issue. Uh, actually, we know the uh, complaint from the uh, the non-resident uh, taxpayer about the the verification of the payment whether when they provide the bank account and pin number after that 
the, the purchaser they can pay uh, through the uh, employee the visa card and order the credit card they don't pay through the company bank account how the company the non-resident supplier can verify whether the payment is through the bank account or not uh, based on our law uh, regulation actually we mentioned about that but for this issue we agree with the, the complaint we will the issue instruction uh, currently issue already or not yet not yet but actually uh, our team trust the regulation already instruction allow the company they can pay through uh, the uh, visa card and others the uh, account but the application the purchaser as a fair assessment taxpayer must provide TIN number and bank account of the company. They can pay uh, through the employee bank account and then as a direct reimburse to the employee is, is to help the, the taxpayer more easier. But in our existing uh, regulation, actually they mentioned clearly, they must uh, place order uh, and must give the uh, TIN number and the bank account and pay, must pay through that bank account. But we will change our instruction. We issue the new instruction to, to compromise, is to help the uh, tax payer uh, easier to pay tax. Because the, most of the uh, non resident supplier, they, they say that they have no system to verify whether they pay through the company bank account or not. So they say that if they, they can verify, they must use the human. If the system cannot, they don't have systems like that. So to compromise or to help taxpayer to pay tax easily, we will uh, change. We will issue a new instruction to allow the, the, the non-resident supplier to not to charge VAT if they supply digital goods or services to the purchaser who provide two important information, the TIN number and bank account of the company. The bank account of the company, I mentioned already during my presentation, to state that, to clarify that, the transaction actually happened between the sales assessment to the supplier. If we request, some people say that why uh, don't just only request one information, important information, a thin, thin number. I mean, I, I said, I stayed in during my presentation already. I myself, actually, I, I order the software for personal use. I can use the thin number or the company. I can use a clean uh, company thin number or orders uh, company thin number. I place order. Finally, who responsible VAT? So this is our issue. But if they put the number and account name, they, 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 the people, they cannot cheat. They must uh, clarify that the transaction happened between the assessment to the, the non-resident supplier. And finally, if they don't declare, they don't pay tax properly, we have both sides. One, supplier information that they require supplier information to put in the appendix, declare to GDT, and the purchaser assessment, assessment taxpayer, they have to fill the form in appendix and submit to GDT. Both information can verify whether they pay properly or not. Yeah. Thank you. So one question for Clint, because right now we haven't really asked any questions for Clint, so we, we need to find one. For so um, this is, this is one which, which sometimes is, is complicated for um, marketplaces. Marketplaces which we sell other products, like we're talking, you know, things like uh, Food Panda or Nan24 and so on. Um, in these situations, um, where basically they are effectively enabling Cambodian local businesses to sell via their platform, um, these platforms are, are responsible for. Could you confirm collecting the VAT and then? Who declares the VAT for each part of the service provided uh, and who pays it effectively? Thank you. I mean, this is uh, like His Excellency um, Ingratana mentioned that the 
the VAT um, issues that His Excellency was referring to refer to non-residents. But what your question is referring to comes back to the uh, domestic law in Cambodia, the standard law on taxation, tax on income, praka. So if we have the Nam 24 example where you have a, a food supplier who's supplying via Nam 24, and typically Nam 24, they may receive their revenue by some type of commission. Um, the, the food retailer, if you like, they are responsible for the VAT on their sales. They are responsible for the corporate tax on their sales. Uh, now 24 are responsible for the VAT on their commission, and they are responsible for any other taxes on their, on their commission also. So it's a bit different to what His Excellency was referring to with a platform provider for a non-resident who has to collect on behalf of non-resident suppliers. Here we're dealing with the domestic law in Cambodia, which applies to, to all taxpayers who operate in Cambodia. Okay, understood. Thank you for, 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 for that one. Um, now, um, what will be interesting uh, before we open up to, to, to general questions would be to get a little bit of general views of how the application of these laws for the MOC as well as for the GGT is gone. And I'll, I'll start with, uh, with, with you, Mr. Hui. Um, how many non-residents uh, have applied for uh, a license to date? And uh, how is that process come, coming along? So, um, as I have mentioned earlier, uh, either resident or non-resident, they have to uh, set up a legal entity here. But uh, at the earlier stage, when we announced the uh, broadcast granting on the license or permit, there's uh, a lot of non-resident, they uh, getting the information, the inquiry, how, how can they uh, register and get the license from the MOC. So we have a feedback to them, we have explaining them, and some of them, uh, they know the procedure. So they uh, come to Cambodia and then they set up as a foreign branch, and then they use that foreign branch in order to obtain the license uh, from MOC. So right now for those non-resident, we have um, around from 20 to 30 that they have uh, applied the big one. Uh, we have like a, a Grab, we have like the Aon, the Catalan, and some big firm already here that register to get the license from the MOC. And the small one, we have also several number as well for the local here. Yeah. Okay. And that takes me to my next question, still, still with you, which is basically the, 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 the deadlines for uh, the registrations have been extended in, in, in the past. I think they've been extended to the 1st of July. Um, are we gonna get a further extension? Um, well, the extension, extension here, uh, we have extend like three times already. Uh, three three times, for one time we extend three months. So almost uh, uh, nine months already that, that we have extend. And during that period of extend, we have conduct the workshop so that uh, to get the public awareness, especially like what we have done today. So everyone here can go back if you don't have your own business online, but you have your family, you have your relative or you have your client that are doing the business online that uh, fulfill the requirement that stated in our sub degree that need to apply for license, please forward the message to them that our deadline will be on 1st July, 2020, 1st July, like the next 10 days. And uh, with the opinion of our top leader, when they, when they released the third delay announcement, we were not going to do another delay. So it should be the last time delay announcement on this one. So uh, you have only 10 days left for delaying the penalty. So starting from uh, 1st July, 2022, we will uh, put the law into practice and we will observe all on the platform, on the online, we have the team tracking. So every day we have a team to tracking down which application form, I mean, which application online they, they sell on Facebook or either they have their own application that they don't come to get the license yet. So we have the list of that. After the date, we will drop that list down and then 
via uh, directly to the, the company or to the, the, the place that they sell. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. And, and your excellency, can you give us a little bit of an idea of how things are coming along on, on your side of things from the GDT point of view? Thank you uh, for GDT, GDT point of view. We currently, we set up the uh, a group of people to overlook the transaction to internet. If they have transaction to Cambodia, they don't register. Uh, GDT can invite them or if they don't come, as I mentioned already, we register unilaterally and we do that assessment based on information that we have. Because if they uh, uh, supply to uh, the register company, we have information when they file tax return, we can combine those information and we calculate whether they have turnover more than threshold or not. If they have turnover less than threshold, no need to register. But if they have turnover more than threshold, we can invite them to come to register. So far, the company come to register uh, more than uh, uh, 44 already in pay tax. It's at the beginning stage, only first month of the implementation, we pay tax um, around uh, 4, 4 million US dollars. But uh, the newcomer, they come uh, every day. And some, they don't know the company market yet, that now they start to know, as I mentioned already, the, this emerging market for Cambodia. If they have, we have, if there is no pandemic, COVID-19, I think also they have no pandemic e-commerce to Cambodia also. So because uh, uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, that's why people in Cambodia no e-commerce. So they come, uh, more, com more and more company come to, to have transaction with the Cambodian people as well as the company. So they, they, are, they have to come to register with GDT. Uh, for the uh, the the next uh, uh, issue is that the PE as I mentioned already we are studying how to levy tax. Uh, uh, let's say the income tax from the the uh, e-commerce transaction because this income tax uh, is a big issue for the the the. Uh, e-commerce currently not Cambodia, uh, even the developed country also they have problem because the if we tax income tax base or we determine it's a PE, they have problem because tax both both side. It means that the, the old country they tax and also the source country tax is double tax. So they need as I I know from the OECD. Uh, 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 proposal is what they call the pillar one, pillar two. They propose to allocate the profit to South country. It's not determined the PE. But we continue to study. Uh, we not stand alone, Cambodia. We have to learn from other country to do whatever they can uh, operate in Cambodia. And we uh, get benefit both sides. They, they can sell a uh, Digital goods or services in Cambodia, and Cambodia can uh, benefit from those digital goods and services. If we we impose any issue to them, they stop. They not come to Cambodia. They, we are both sides lose the benefit. The win-win solution, I think. GDT we study. It's not uh, GDT alone. We need to learn from other tax understand in the world. I mentioned before we trust that population and myself and my team. We research on internet and also we talk to clean and ask the big company, large company uh, that they have to send with, uh, Cambodian, in, uh, with Cambodian people. They come to ask them, they learn from them, the, they have experience than us, they implement different country in the world. Some country like Facebook, more than 100 country in the world, they recommend to us, we learn from them, that's why. Oh, we, we change, that's why I show on the, my presentation the, the product interaction issue uh, three or four times because when we know the problem, we fix the problem by learning from the, the recommendation of, uh, from the TAC PR as well as from the TAC business and different country. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, one question from uh, people online. Um, 
A foreign company is selling cybersecurity software online. Is that company considered an e-commerce company when it's selling to a Cambodian uh, buyer? Me? Um, to, to Mr. Hui. Okay. Thank you. So um, the foreign company that sells software to, to our uh, Cambodian citizen consumer, a consumer. So uh, very short question, yeah you need to apply for license because they have the transaction inside Cambodia yep. from outside. So either uh, goods or services. Okay, perfect. At the, for TDT also, for tax support also, as I uh, said in my, my presentation, the orders, supply, delivers online. Is offline? No, e-commerce. The e-commerce must be online. It's the supply, orders, supply and deliver products through online. And only intangible for tax purpose. This is for local also. We apply the same rule, but for local, we have to comply. The law has been implemented a long time. It's as a PE or registered company. But for, for e-commerce uh, taxation, I mentioned this morning, it's only non-resident who have no PE or who have no uh, the register, not register in Cambodia as a company or uh, a corporation or the, the, the branch office. When they have the branch office, a place of business activity, business premise, we consider as PE, permanent establishment. When we consider a permanent establishment for tax purpose, they have to comply the law on taxes and have been implemented long time. They have to declare everything, income tax, everything, salary tax and withholding tax, uh, bring benefit tax, and especially they, they have to carry book account, accounting book properly, accounting record. But for non-resident, we register a simplified what it is session. We not require them to uh, carry accounting book according to our law because they stay outside Cambodia. The body outside, the hand also not put in Cambodia. If they have brand, it means that they put the hand in Cambodia, they tap on the, the hand. But for the, the register as a simplified, simplified body station, the body outside, the hand and outside, yeah, they not come to Cambodia. They sell through online, no PE. Yeah, but in the future, as I already mentioned, we learn from other country as proposed by OECD. We try to tax uh, some part of income tax, but based on the proposal of the OECD, the allocation. But in, in some country like the India, they, they apply the, what they call the uh, equalization tax. They determine how many percent have to pay it in into a D as income, like income tax, but uh, they assume how, how many percent, but they don't require to have the accounting record properly because they don't have business premise in Cambodia, Cambodia, they have no PE. How can they uh, have the accounting record in Cambodia? This is a, a big problem. But for, for OECD uh, proposal, they allocate the income tax to the South country. But we, we learn, we will learn Together, uh, not we are alone. We learn from other country in the world. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, we have a substitutory question on the NAM twenty four case uh, question um, we discussed with with Clint, and uh, I'll just read you the question. It's a bit long. Um, regarding the response by Clint on the example of NAM twenty four, that it earns only the com the, the commission, and thus it pays only VAT output on the earned commission. Does the rule on agent principle apply here? Oh, that's a very good question. And I think uh, His Excellency Ing Ratana wrote the praka on agent <laughs> principle in Cambodia. So um, I, and I will defer to His Excellency, but as far as I understand, um, if you have an agent principal relationship within Cambodia, then there is a registration requirement with the GDT under the agent principal Praka. 
Um, so I think you really have to look carefully uh, at the relationship between NAM24 and, and the retail shop. Is it, is it an agent principle or is it something else? But I will defer to um, His Excellency further on that point. Thank you, Mr. Klin. And refer, refer the question to me, actually, uh, the broadcast on the agent sale and goods and services is uh, apply only uh, local transactions, so not across the border. Is the the uh, any company, any supplier who appoint the agent, and they really recognize only local sales so not across the border. Across the border cannot be a uh, agent sale goods and services because we don't know how to verify whether uh, the uh, principal and agent are declared that properly or not. But it's local to the sun. One side declare and uh, second side declare and we can verify whether the principal agent is, is declared that properly or not. But for across the border, we're not allowed as an agent selling goods and services based on our regulation currently. Actually, the, uh, the, the question continues because it's a long one, and it actually um, comes up with an issue, which is that what happens if the, um, the, the shop selling the product is not tax registered? Um, in which case, both one of the two parties in the agent principle are not tax registered. What, what happens at that point? Does you know, the, uh, the platform need to collect uh, VAT uh, and charge other things? How, how would they deal with that? You mean that the uh, non-resident uh, supplier platform or? or so, so for example, the, in the example of, of NAM24, let's say that the, 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 the restaurant uh, for which they're selling stuff on NAM24 is not tax registered. Oh, NAM24. Uh, so it's a local transaction. The lo local transaction. They have to register and comply our law, our law and regulation. Okay. Yeah, not the e-commerce uh, transaction based on our regulation that we we mentioned this morning. Not cover. We cover this morning. We mentioned a VT on e-commerce only. Mm -hmm. The non-resident who have no PE for other like you mentioned the uh, what uh, twenty. Uh, Yam 24, which is a local. Yam, yeah, Yam 24 is a registered local. in Cambodia locally. Uh, uh, they have to comply the law on tax and they have to pay, pay income tax with uh, salary tax, with holding tax, uh, benefit income tax, and have, they have to file tax return, monthly tax return, yearly tax return after all the company locally operated. Perfect. Yes. Thank you very much, okay. Your Excellency. We'll open it up to the questions in the public. Gentlemen, thank you. Please present much. yourself and, and your question to who you want to ask it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have uh, several points, not really a question. Thank you for moderator for uh, raising a lot of good questions to the panelists. Uh, I have two points to gentlemen from MOC. One, you mentioned a, a few uh, a few words. I I catch you, you if I'm not mistaken. You said that if the company who is now doing physical product selling, I mean on market as usual, want to move itself to include e-commerce, need to adjust or add something into the m a business activity, something like number, reference number 479, something like that. Can you have some extra advice on that? A second point is that Thank you for the moderator again. You asked question about NAM24 and the connection with the uh, it, 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 uh, client. If a company currently engage with NAM1, uh, what is the role or the application of the company that use the platform of NAM1 to ensure that that company is, is, a, is a compliant with the regulation? Notify that the payment is not made through Nyama Pay Buon. The payment is made directly, the transaction made directly to the company, except purchase order made by the platform of Nyama Pay Buon. 
that's two points to gentlemen from MOC. A uh, couple of points to Excellency Ratana uh, from TDT. I, I would like to pick up this exact case happened in Cambodia. A uh, QuickBook and Microsoft. The company in Cambodia have been purchasing and using QuickBook and Microsoft, including uh, monthly maintenance fee. So the question is that need, need your advice and require, including uh, required action. Does the company need to do the 10% what reverse? And then from when? From the time that the company purchased those uh, online those uh, uh, digital service or what? Thank you. Sorry, I'm somebody from Apathy Group. Sorry, Moretta. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. For your, your question, your two questions. So uh, let me answer the first uh, one question is regarding to the existing company that nowadays, for example, they sell physical goods and because of the, the technology development, they now want to sell online. So what are those, uh, the company requirement to do? So uh, as I have mentioned in the podcast, we said that you need to have the certificate of incorporation, which has business online activity. So to have to comply in that requirement, so you need to make your change on your, your memorandum of article association with the Ministry of Commerce. You can do it online. You just go to the ad business activity and then go there. You can just uh, select the, the code number 479. So that code is the code that uh, doing the business online activity. So you just add that business activity one. And then uh, when you got the approval, it will be stated on the company extract that your company is now have the business activity online to do uh, e-commerce online. And then you fulfill that one requirement that we stated in our broadcast. And then you can uh, asking and applying for the license. Um, is it, am I answering your question correctly, right? Thank you. For the second question regarding to the application between the uh, service provider and then the platform and the, for example, Nyama Paybun. So, um, in this one, as uh, I have mentioned, so the, all the service provider inside the Nyama Paybu no need to asking for the permit or license from MOC. But the Nyama Paybu itself, when they applying for the license with the MOC, we have extra condition, extra uh, document requirement, which stated that the Nyama Paybu need to file a sample contract between the platform, for example, Nyama Paybun with the service provider inside the platform. And with that sample agreement, we need to review and check if they have the contract, for example, including the, the Article 29 in the law of e-commerce that stated that all the service provider on, online need to obey, need to have the minimum consumer protection. So in that contract sample, that Nyama Paybun follow with us, they need to have the registration with the platform and the e-commerce service provider inside that have the real, exactly the name, the physical address of that uh, uh, service provider, the ID card, the phone number, and the condition that they need to have to binding in that contract is the four minimum consumer protection policy, including a return policy, refund policy, a change good policy or service or cancellation for policy or, or refund the money. So that's why we don't require for those service provider inside the platform to get the license from the MOC. So as the, the Nyama Paybun, they have the burden, they have the application to control the service provider inside their platform itself. And then they need to report to uh, Ministry of Commerce uh, yearly that what are the number of service provider inside the platform, how many, and uh, what are the update inside the platform. Thank you. Uh, if I answer your, 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 your question, Derek, thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Sambat, that asked question to me, uh, the quick book. Question divided in two. One question divided in two. One is whether it's a subject to e-commerce transaction or not, including the monthly uh, fee. And second, the when. Whether the, the, the transaction happened, have been happened before and and, 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 and subject to e-commerce or not, right? So when? So the first question answer among two is the QuickBook is uh, the e-commerce. How you change your uh, service render or you uh, the supply service through internet <clears throat> is uh, e-commerce transaction. And uh, the, the, the second uh, answer is that when? when the time of supply for the river charge as the, the uh, assessment taxpayer who uh, purchase uh, digital goods and services from non-supplier, non-resident supplier, the, the earlier the service render or the payment is due or the payment is paid, made. So is uh, any money that already paid is not subject to VT again, not river charge again. But if the new tenant sent from a 50 date, first April, you know already, right? A 50 date, first April 2022. So if suppose, uh, suppose with some service, you pay in advance, you pay already, you don't need to pay uh, uh, some more additional. Because the, let's say you pay QuickBook for one year and you pay on January already for year 2022. So I don't know, uh, at that time, the first April is not implemented yet. Now, but if they will de be delayed or postponed to first April 2022, if you pay for the service render 2022 full year, you don't need to pay a private watch charge again. But if you have any new transaction incur Starting from 1st April 2022, you have to apply the white charge and pay the GDT. And at the same time, you can claim input tax also for the month that then said incur. You okay? No, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Any further questions? The lady? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for your presentation this morning. So uh, my name is Constance Rossi. I'm the business development manager of Zurich Pharma Cambodia. Uh, therefore, I have questions related to e-commerce, but also uh, to the health sector, right? So the first one being um, for a company registered in Cambodia, how long does it take to receive the license? Do you have any sense of timeline to share to us? And the second question being, um, if we want to provide a healthcare service, right, what do we need to do? How do we navigate? First, we have the license from the Ministry of Commerce, and then we only um, refer to the MOH, or do we still have to work together, MOH and, and MOC jointly? Yeah, I would like to understand these two points. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, so I just recap the, the, the question again. So if I, my answer is correct or not. So your question is that um, you want to ask him for the how long that you're gonna register a company in Cambodia or how long you, you, you want to know that how long you register for license for the e-commerce. So in the case of uh, license for entities okay, for okay. already registered company in Cambodia. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So um, inside the broadcast, we also mentioned that uh, for the process of the application, when you put, you, you place the application to us, we have 10 working days to answer back, either, either that uh, we need more further information from, from the company or we asking you to take the certificate from us. So the working day for, for entity to, I, to obtain the license is 10 working days. And the license is last for three years that uh, you can uh, extend at the end of the period. And the second question is regarding to the Ministry of, uh, uh, if you are working on uh, business in relating to the health, uh, even though 
either that you need to obtain the license from uh, OMOC first or uh, Ministry of Health first. So uh, I want to clarify this one first. So you are existing company. So first you register company with MOC, uh, GDT and uh, other related ministry according to your business objective. So if you are on health, I think uh, when you firstly register company, you need to get the license from the MOH. But either you are consulting offline or online, it's a different uh, story. So when you obtain the license from MOC, uh, GDT, and uh, MOH, so now you can uh, officially, legally, for example, a uh, uh, health consultant. So you can set up an office, a clinic, you can receive the patient, and then you do the health checking by having the customer. But you want to move your business to online because consultant on health, you also can uh, do it online as well. So to add the extra business objective on online, you just exceptionally just asking for the license from MOC and then you can do it online because you have your basic license already. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. One last question from the crowd. No? Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. We realize that we've uh, gone a little bit longer than what we uh, expected. So I guess it reflects the interest in, in the topic. So please join me in thanking uh, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Eng Ratana, as well as Hui Bun Chai and Clint O'Connor from DFDL for being wonderful panelists for today's session. Thank you very much.